Hello, Luke. Welcome to lesson 75. Today, we've got uh, some things to get through. So we're going to be talking about uh, writing the equation of a line and what that is. And then we'll be using that to uh, use another method for graphing. It's called the slope intercept method uh, for graphing, which is actually a much better way of graphing lines uh, compared to the way that we've been doing it up to this point. So we're actually going to start by just uh, doing a quick review, I guess, uh, just reminding you how we've been graphing lines up to this point. So recall they've been giving us equations such as this one, 3x plus 2y is equal to 4, and they might say graph this, okay? And the way we've been doing it up to this point is we've been creating a table. We, re we create a table with some x and y values, and we just start plugging them in, right? Now we have talked about when we have an equation such as this, the best route to take is to first solve it for the x or for the y, so we don't have to continually keep solving it for that variable every time we select a new value. So for example here, we might decide to solve this equation for the y. And if we were to do that, we would have to subtract 3x from both sides. And we'd end up with 2y is equal to 4 minus 3x. We would then divide both sides by 2, and we'd end up with y is equal to 4 divided by 2 is 2, minus 3x divided by 2, which would be the same thing as 3 halves x. Okay, so we end up with this as our equation. And now it's very easy to plug in our values and graph the line. So we would end up with something like this. So we just filled in our table with some values that I just chose, and then we plot those values, those points, uh, based on what the x value gave me for a y value, and that would be our line. We would just simply connect the dots, right? So when we did this, it, uh, it got sometimes a little bit tedious, you know, writing out this table with all the values and everything else. And there actually is a much easier way to graph lines, and that's what we're going to look at today. And it's called the equation of the line. We're going to be using the equation of the line, and then we will be using the slope-intercept method. So the first step in that process is to find the equation of the line, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. But before we do that, let's, let's talk a little bit about lines just in general, okay? So when we think about lines, there's a couple different scenarios that we could have. So if I take this graph and I just start throwing lines on there, what kind of lines could I possibly put on here, you know, if I were to just put any line? Well, I might put on a line that looks something like this, right? Straight across the page, all right? Now these ones are pretty straightforward. So this one has an equation, and the equation is simply, whoops, get back to my other pen here, y, whoops, y is equal to, looks like 3 right here. That is the equation for this line, right? y is equal to 3. So very straightforward, uh, very easy. All right. The other kind of line we might see would be one that goes, you know, uh, straight up and down. Okay, similar, but just the other direction, right? And if that's the case, then also the equation is very simple. The equation is simply x, in this case, x is equal to 2, it looks like. Okay, so that would be the equation for this line. All right, those are kind of the obvious lines, and we should be able to recognize those equations right off the bat. So if I give you the equation x equals 2, you shouldn't have to even think, really. You should just be able to know that x is always going to be 2 no matter what y is, so it's just the line straight up and down at the x is equal to 2 location. Okay, but there are obviously many other kind of lines that we could, kinds of lines that we could use as well. So we might see some lines that look like, you know, like... Uh, like this. Maybe it goes slanted. Maybe it goes up like this. Or maybe it's going really slanted. Maybe it's going, you know, straight up like that. Or maybe it's almost flat, but not quite. Maybe it's kind of going up like that. Okay. With these lines, one thing that they all have in common 
is they're all kind of going uphill, right? If you kind of imagine yourself walking across the page, going from left to right, and maybe we'll just draw a little strict stick guy here, right? If he's walking across the page, he's going to be walking uphill as he walks on this line. And that would be true for all of these lines. He's walking uphill. The incline is upwards. Okay, so that would be kind of one category of line, the lines that are kind of going uphill as you walk across the page from left to right. Okay, what's another kind of line that we could have? Well, you might have guessed it. Another kind of line whoop, is one that would go downhill. So we could have lines that uh, look like this, right? And they could range in the amount of downhill slope they have. But if you look at these, if our little man is walking across the page here, he is going to be walking downhill as he works his way down these lines, right? I think in the book they use a little truck, a little man in a car or something like that. But it's the same concept. So we can have lines that are kind of upward sloped, like these blue lines, or downward sloped, like these red lines. Or we could have lines straight across or straight up and down. And if you think about it, that's really all we could have. That kind of sums up every possible straight line that we could put on this graph. They would all fall into one of those three categories. So just for clarity, let's, let's write them down again. We've got lines that are um, sloping down, sloping down. We have lines that are sloping up. And then we have, I guess there's four categories. If we kind of break these other ones up into two, we could say, whoops, I'll go with, uh, I think it was this color. We could have vertical lines. And then of course, the other one was the horizontal line. Okay, so those are the four kinds of lines that we could possibly place on this graph. Everything we, we draw is going to fall into one of these four categories. And we already said the horizontal and the vertical are very easy. Those ones are kind of obvious. That's the equations that look like this. X equals 2 and Y equals 3. Okay, so the ones that are a little more interesting are the ones that are sloping up or the ones that are sloping down. Okay? Um, now, I say all of this because that is going to kind of lead us into the next thing that we'll talk about, which is the equation of the line. All right. Now, the equation of the line is not nearly as complicated, complicated as it might sound. All the equation of the line is, is a form in which we write the equation. All right. So earlier, I gave you this equation, 3x plus 2y is equal to 4. Okay. Maybe let's just rewrite that over here. So let's say we have this line, and let's say we want to get it into the equation of the line form. I'll just write that down here. Well, what is the equation of the line form? The equation of the line form looks like this. y equals mx plus b. Okay, that is the standard way of writing the general form for the equation of the line. Okay, now don't let this confuse you. There are really two components here. There's the M and the B. The Y and the X, those are the variables that we're gonna see in all of our equations for a line. There's a Y and there's an X in this, in e this equation. The M and the B are very straightforward. The M just represents the coefficient in front of the X. It's right here, it's just the coefficient in front of the X. The B, is the number uh, that does not have a variable. Okay, so the m is the coefficient in front of the x, whatever that is, and the b is whatever number is the number that doesn't have a variable. Okay, so looking at this equation, if we wanted to write this in the form of the equation of the line, we'd want to get it into this form, y equals mx plus b. So you might see that really what we're trying to do is solve for y, which is actually what we did earlier. 
And if you recall, earlier we solved for y, and we got this uh, right here, right? We got y is equal to 2 minus 3 halves x, right? So let's go back, and let's just put that. So if we rewrite this in the form of y equals, we end up with y equals 2 minus 3 halves x. Now we're almost in this form. Not quite, but we're almost in this form. What's missing? Well, <clears throat> we have the y equals. That's taken care of. We have y equals here. We have some x term. Well, we have that right here, but it's in the wrong spot. It should be first, okay? And then we also have some coefficient or some just number term and that's what we have right here. But again, it's in the wrong spot. We need to flip-flop these two. So let's rewrite it in the correct form. y is equal to, and I'm going to write the x term first. The x term is negative 3 halves x. And then the, the number term is just plus 2. Okay? So there we go. We have it now in what's called the equation of the line form. This is the equation of the line form, okay? And you might ask, well, great. Well, what did that do for us? Where is this all going? Well, that is the next thing that we need to talk about. Once we have it in the equation of the line form, we can use this form to graph the line without building a table of x and y values as we've done in the past, all right? Because, as people have studied these equations, they've noticed that these numbers in this form represent certain aspects of the line that we can duplicate on our graph, or we can translate, I should say, onto our graph. All right, so let me explain that. The M, let's talk about that first. What does the M do for us? Okay, so the M is equal to the slope of the line. So this m right here in the equation of the line represents the slope of the line. What do I mean by slope? Well, I mean these red and blue lines. It represents how much it's sloping and whether it's sloping up or sloping down. Okay, That can all be learned from this m. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? I can tell you whether that line is going to be steeply sloping upwards or steeply sloping downwards or only maybe just shallow sloping downwards and slightly sloping upwards. I can tell you all of that based on one coefficient, this m right here. Okay, So that is what the m represents. The m represents slope. So in your math um, notebook, you should write that down. Write down the equation of the line. Line, You're going to want to memorize this form, y equals mx plus b. You will see that a lot in upcoming lessons and upcoming courses in math, y equals mx plus b. So make sure you have that memorized. But then you also need to memorize what the, the, the uh, variables represent. What does the m represent? It ep represents the slope, okay? Now, to fully understand this, we need to talk more about what the slope is, all right? And to do that, I'm going to just randomly place, oh, I don't know, how do I want to, whoops, how do I want to place a line on here? Maybe um, something like that, okay? So let's say I throw this line on the graph, and I were to ask you what's the slope of it. Well, we first need to define what slope is, okay? And there is a definition for it. So what is slope? Slope is defined as the rise over the run. So it's a ratio, okay? The rise is how much the line is rising over the run, which is how much it's traveling from left to right. Okay? Because as this line travels upward, it's also traveling across the page. So there's two aspects to it, two dimensions to it. It's going up and down. It's also going from left to right. Okay, 
So this rise over, over run sets that, those two dimensions up as a ratio to each other. So what does this mean in practical terms? Well, what this means is if I take a point on this line, let's just select this point right here, okay? I select that point, and then I'm going to select another point. And let's say I select this point right here, okay? They both live on the line. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on this point and travel straight downwards, okay? Straight down. Now, my line isn't perfectly straight. You'll have to use your imagination a little bit, but I'm traveling straight downwards. Then I start on this blue dot, and I go to the right straight, flat, I should say. Flat across, flat, flat across the page here, okay? So we're drawing it this direction until it meets my other line. Okay, so I've formed this essentially this triangle and this is a 90 degree triangle okay we're going straight up straight across okay now this triangle represents the rise of the line from you know this this segment of the line okay it's representing how high this line has risen over this this small segment and how far across the page this line has traveled from left to right okay so if we we look at the answers to that we would see that the rise which would be this right side of the triangle here the one that's going up and down the rise is two units here's one unit here here's another unit right so we've got one unit two whoops two unit right two units or you might say there's, you know, two, two squares, right? It went up two squares. So the rise is two. The run is what? How many squares has it traveled across the page? It's traveled two squares. So the run is also two in this case. The rise is two and the run is two. Okay? So in this particular case, the rise over the run is going to be two over two which means the slope is going to be 1, because 2 divided by 2 is 1. Okay? Now, what does that 1 mean? Again, it's a ratio. How would I write 1 as a ratio or as a fraction? Well, I could write that as 1 over 1, right? So this would mean 1 unit of rise for 1 unit of run. And doesn't that make sense? If I go to any spot on this line, let's say I select this spot right here. If I go over one unit, so my run, this denominator, I go over one unit, and then I go up one unit, I'm back on the line, aren't I? And the same thing would apply here. Or you might think of it the other way. I might start by going with the rise. If I start right here, and I rise one unit, and then I go over, I do a run of one unit, boom, once again, I'm right on my line, right? So I rise one, I go over one, I'm on my line. Or you could look at it as I run one, and then I rise one, I'm still on my line. Okay, so that's what the slope tells us. It tells us how slanted this line is, the pitch of this line okay so hopefully that kind of is clear to you that is what the slope represents that is what m represents okay so the m tells us how uphill or downhill this line is going now in this particular case the the the, the line is sloping uphill okay now i might have just as easily drawn a line that's maybe sloping downhill Maybe it's, you know, starting here, and it's going down this way, okay? Now, if we were to look at this line and do the same thing that we did before, we would see that it's similar, right? If I start here, if I start here, and I go over, I run one, and then I rise one, which in this case, I'm going to go down one to get me back to the line, I would still end up on the line, right? Or if I wanted to go this direction, I could run this way. I could run one unit this way, 
and go up one unit and be on the line again. So you can see that the run, the rise over the run, is the same as it was with our other line. It's just this line is pitched differently. This line is pitched downhill, and the other the other line was pitched uphill. Okay. So how do you know if a line is going down or going up by looking at the slope? Very easy. Look at the sign. Okay. If the slope is positive, so if the slope is a positive slope, let's say it's a positive one, so if m is equal to a positive one, then it's going uphill, uphill, with a with a run o a rise over a <laughs> with a rise over a run of one over one. If I turn this into a fraction, okay. If m is a negative number, like negative one. And again, if I turn that into a fraction, I'd go negative 1 over 1. This is sloping downhill. Okay? So I know it's a lot of information, but it's pretty straightforward once you, you kind of grasp what's going on here. This M gives us a lot of information. It tells us the slope of the line, and it also tells us the direction, you might say. Is it going uphill or is it going downhill? The sign over here... This is what's going to tell us whether it's going uphill or going downhill as we go from the left to the right to cross the graph. And then the number itself will tell us the amount of um, steepness, maybe, <laughs> the amount of pitch, maybe, on the line. Okay? All right. So that is slope. Now, one other thing. The B. What does the B represent? The B tells us what's called the Y intercept the y intercept okay because when we look at these lines all these crazy lines that i drew here remember right now we're dealing with just lines there aren't, there aren't any curves in here and there are lines in which so long as they're not vertical like this one where x is equal to 2 any other line is going to have to cross over this y-axis at some point, right? It may not be on this graph that we see, but if we could enlarge this graph, if we could make it larger, we would see that at some point, all of these lines that I drew, again, except for this x equals 2, is going to cross this y-axis at some point. For example, this really long blue line is going to cross it somewhere probably up here, right, as this continues to go up. If I were to continue this x-axis up, we would end up up here somewhere. Okay, so it does cross the x or the y-axis, but it just crosses it way up high where we can't see it on this graph. All right, uh, but the other ones actually, they're all pretty clear. Uh, this one crosses it at this point. Uh, this blue one crosses it here, the red one here, this other red one here, this blue one down here. Okay, so they all cross over that y-axis at some point. And that crossing point, that is called the y-intercept. Okay, where does it cross the y? So this orange line is crossing it on y equals 3, it looks like. Okay, so the y-intercept here is 3. Uh, maybe this red line here, it almost looks like it's crossing it somewhere between 0 and 1, and it's pretty much right in the middle, so that would maybe be at 1 half. So it's crossing the y-axis at 1 half. 1 half would be the y-intercept. All right, This one is crossing it at a negative 4. So negative 4 would be the y-intercept. All right, So the y-intercept is just where the line crosses over the y-axis, and this B tells us where that's going to occur. This B right here. Okay, so whatever this B is, that's where it's crossing over. And that should make sense because once we have it in our Y, or I mean our equation of the line form, if we were to go back to our chart, right, and, and plug in values for X's and Y's, well, then we would just maybe plug in an X equals zero. That'd be a nice, easy one to plug in for x. And if we do that, everything here is going to eliminate. That's all going to become 0. And all we're left with is this 2. So y is going to become the 2. So when x is 0, and where is x 0? x is 0 right here at the origin. When x is equal to 0, y is just going to be whatever this number is. Okay? That's why it's the intercept. 
So this last number in this equation of the line form is always going to tell us where this line is going to cross over the y-axis. Okay, so in this particular equation, it crosses over at positive 2. So this would be positive 2. All right. Now, where exactly this line is going, um, <clears throat> we have to look at our slope to figure that out. So here, for this particular equation, the slope is this negative 3 halves. Okay, negative 3 halves. So what did we learn? We learned that when it's a negative, that means it's going downhill. All right, so we know this line is going downhill from left to right. Okay, we also know that the slope is uh, defined as rise over run. So this has got a three rise for every two run. Okay, so if I start right here, because I know the line is going to go through here, and I know it's going to have a negative slope, it's going to be going downhill, then I might say, okay, I'll go over, uh, well, maybe I'll, I'll rise three. Let's do that. Let's do the rise part first. We're going to go up three squares, one, two, three, three units, and then we're going to run over two. All right, now, if I run over, maybe we'll just kind of draw this a little bit. One, two, three. So I'm right here right now. Um, if I run this direction two uh, spaces, two units, and then connect my dots, you can see I'm creating an uphill line. We don't want an uphill line. We want a downhill line because that's what the sign is. It's negative. So we're not going to run this direction. We're going to run the other direction. So we run two units to the left. One, two. That puts us right here. Okay. And now we can actually connect these, these dots. There we go. That is our graph. And I was able to draw that line in there without the aid of any, without any uh, table simply by looking at the equation in the equation of the line form. Okay, so that may have all seemed pretty complicated. Uh, it's really not bad, but let's, let's take some time and go through a couple problems here because I think it'll really help once we just try to work some of these. So let's take this first one and let's graph all of these. So this is three different equations. Let's graph the first one. So what's the first step? And this might be a good thing to write down in your notebook. The first step, get in equation of the line form. Okay, that's the first step. And the equation of the line form is, of course, y is equal to mx plus b. That's the form we're trying to get it into. So let's start with that. So we have this equation. Let's first rewrite it, solving for y so that we can get it into this form. So if we move the 2x over to the other side, we're going to have 3y is equal to 6 minus 2x, right? I just moved it over to the other side. Now I divide everything by 3, and I end up with y is equal to 6 divided by 3, which is a 2. Negative 2x divided by 3 would be negative 2 thirds x. And then I need to rearrange this so that I have my x term first. So y so I would have y equals two, negative two thirds x plus two. All right, so there we go. We have it now in the correct form. Now we can go ahead and graph it. All right, so here's our graph. Let's start putting in what we know. It's easiest to start with the y-intercept. So maybe that's step number two over here. We could write that down. Step number two. Uh, plot the y-intercept. So in this case, what is our y-intercept? Well, it's positive 2. So we'll find positive 2 on the graph and plot it. There's our positive 2. Now, what's our rise over our run? Well, our run is going downhill. That's important to recognize. We have this negative sign. So we're going to be going roughly in, you know, this direction, kind of a line. Um, and what's our rise over our run? So we have our two rise for every three run. So if we go up two, one, two, and then we're going to run three. Well, we're going to run three to the left since we want our line to go downhill. 
So one, two, three. So we went up two over three. That's our second point. Now we could even put a third point in here. We could go start again at this line. And now we could go um, uh, over uh, down two because rise could go either direction. We could rise up or we could, in a sense, rise down. I know that means kind of sink, but in math, in these graphs, rise could mean going down or going up either way. So our rise here is two. So we're going to go maybe down two this time. So one, two, and then we're going to run three. And we're going to run three to the right this time to keep our line going in the same direction. So we go one, two down, one, two, three over, puts another dot right here. And now it's very clear where our line is going to be. It's going to be something like this, right? Something like that. And there we go. We just graphed that line. All right? Very good. All right, let's try this next one. So x equals y plus 5. Let's begin by writing it into our uh, equation of the line form. <clears throat> And actually, maybe just to finish this out, let's write that in here. So number three, whoa, number three is the third step would be to plot uh, points based, whoops, based on slope. Okay. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do this one. X equals Y plus 5. Let's first get it into the correct form. So in this case, we have X on the wrong side. We want to solve for Y. So let's solve for Y. We have, um, maybe just we'll flip-flop both of these. We'll, have it, we'll, we'll write it as Y plus 5 equals X, right? I can do that. I can just, you know, equate this in the other direction. Y plus 5 is equal to X. And then we'll solve for the Y. So we'll subtract 5 from both sides, and we end up with y is equal to x minus 5. <clears throat> and this is in the form that we want, right? Because we have our y, we have our x term, and then we have our term without any variable at all. So what's our y-intercept here? Our y-intercept here is negative 5. So on our graph, let's find negative 5, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's going to be right here. And then what's our slope? Our slope is the invisible one right here, right? And if I write the invisible one as a fraction so I can see clearly, clearly my rise over run, it's going to be 1 over 1. So I have a rise over run of 1 over 1. So I go up 1. Now which direction do I want to go? To the left or to the right? This 1 is positive, so we want this to be going uphill. So we're going to go up 1 and then over to the right 1. That way our line, when we connect the dots, will be going uphill. Now I could even start at this dot and then do another rise over a run. Up one, over one. Up one, over one. Up one, over one. I could just keep going, right? I can put all kinds of points there. And then I can connect those dots. And lo and behold, there is our line. Okay? Pretty quick once you get the hang of it. All right, let's take this next one. Why don't you try this one first by yourself, and then we'll do it together. All right, so let's see how you did. First of all, we're trying to solve for y. We're doing this first step here, get the equation of the line form. So let's divide both sides by 5. We want y all by itself. So we divide everything by 5, and we end up with y is equal to 10 divided by 5 is 2 plus 15x divided by 5 is 3x, right? So that works out nicely. Now we can just do some rearranging here to finish out the form. We have 3x plus 2, okay? So now let's, maybe we'll get ourselves a new graph here. Ooh, going a little crazy. There we go. Okay, so there's our graph. Uh, where do we need things? Well, let's look at our y-intercept. So we, and again, we just we just did step number one. Now let's do step number two. Plot the y-intercept. The y-intercept is this positive two, 
which I think is the same intercept we've had every time so far. It's not always going to be two. <laughs> well, I guess here we had a negative five. So, all right. So here we have our positive two. Now, what's our slope? Step two is done. Let's look at step three. What's the slope? Well, the slope is a three. It's a positive. So we know it's going to go uphill. Okay. And we know that the rise over the run is going to be three. Now, if we, if we write that as a fraction, it's three over one. So we have a rise of three and a run of one. So we have a rise of three up one, two, three. And then we're going to go over one to the right so that we keep this line going uphill. Now here I could even go down three, one, two, three, and over this direction, one. If I wanted, I could even do one more, one, two, three, over one. Okay, and there is my, there's some of my points that I can use now to connect to actually create my graph. All right, and there we go. Okay, very quick, uh, very easy once you get the hang of it. Excellent. All right, well, let's just try a couple more quick practice problems just to make sure that you've got this down for your seat work today. So I'll throw a couple problems at you and then I want you to try to graph them on your own and then uh, we'll see how you did. All right, so let's start with, um, go ahead and uh, do the proper steps to graph this using the line or the y or the, excuse me, the slope intercept form. All right, let's see how you did. Uh, so what have we got here? Well, let's first rearrange so that we have it solved for y. y, um, let's see here, negative 2y will subtract the x from both sides. So we have negative 2y is equal to 4 minus x. Now we divide by a negative 2, which is going to give us a y. 4 divided by a negative 2 is a negative 2. And then a negative x divided by a negative 2, that could be written as a positive 1 half x. Hopefully you saw that. Maybe I should just kind of show that one. A negative x divided by a negative 2. Because it's a negative divided by a negative, we know it's going to be equal to the positive x divided by, whoops, by 2. And this would be equivalent, if I just take this x and set it down here, it would be equivalent to x times 1 half, right? Do you see how x times 1 half would give me x over 2? Okay. And then I can, because of our properties for multiplication, I can just switch those around and end up with 1 half x. It's easiest to try to get it in this form where you have a fraction and then the variable. Okay, so hopefully you see how I did that. Now let's go ahead and, and, and plot it. This is kind of the easy, well actually no, what am I saying? We're not quite done yet. We're not in the right form. We have to get it into y is equal to positive one half x minus two. There we go. Now we're in the right form. So now comes the easy part. Now let's just graph this thing. So to graph it, uh, we look at our y-intercept, which is a negative 2 this time, down here. And then we have a rise over run of 1 over 2. It's a positive run over run, so uh, rise over run. So we're going uphill. So we're going to go up 1, but then over 2. 1, 2. Up 1, and then over 2. Now I could go down 1 over 2. That works as well. Down 1 over 2. Look at all these points I'm putting in here. And then we'll just connect them. And I know that's not quite perfect. Maybe do a little better job. Yeah, this one doesn't want to quite line up the way I want it to, but that's pretty close. Okay, excellent. All right. So hopefully this is making sense to you. Um, I would say I think we're going to stop there. We're out of time. But uh, practice these in your seat work. Make sure you have these notes written down in your notebook so that you can study them. It is really important to remember this form, y equals mx plus b, and remembering what each of the different variables represent. Okay, m is the slope, uh, the sign is uphill or downhill, 
that's not gonna look good uphill or downhill and then you've got the B which is the Y intercept okay very good we will stop here good luck and I will see you tomorrow